Who would you prefer, Prime Minister Sunak or Prime Minister Truss? Well, you know, I obviously don't want either of them, but I think well, there's, a real, them, so there's a real danger at the moment, I think, in this Tory contest. I think we've got a hard right uh, uh, cast of really? people. Really? Is that, is that yeah, a reasonable Yeah, I think these are extremists. These are people that are saying we won't, virtually on the edge of saying that tax itself is abhorrent. And tax is a good thing in a progressive society. Tax is, is the means by which you create equality. And they are more or less saying to basically... Well, you, must be, you must be like a Rishi Sunak man then, because he's the one saying... Well, Rishi Sunak would get it back. I mean, they never put progressive taxes. Most of the taxes in this country are raised through VAT. And, and you're well, he wants to put corporation tax up. He wants to whack the profits of the people you it, were just complaining should, about. Because, if, because what you can do about corporation tax, if you want to avoid it, you can reinvest in your workforce and through research and development and, and retooling your company and creating more workers. That's the whole point of a corporation tax, that you do it through, you avoid it through a progressive means by saying, I'm going to get loads of apprentices, I'm going to bring in a more diverse workforce, I'm going to create job opportunities. Because then it hits your profits and you only pay tax on the profit. The thing is, that, I mean, you, you caricature that, that this race has been one where tax is apparently abhorrent. I mean, tax is higher now collectively than it has been in decades and decades and decades. So is government spending by any modern comparison it, of any political party. You, you, that's the sort of thing you'd love well, yes, if it was delivered needs, by a Labour government. Tax needs to be high. But what we've got in this country, and this is never remarked on by the, by the media, even yourselves, those of us that are on PAY cannot afford... Uh, cannot avoid tax. We pay it out of our wages every week. There are many, many people in this country avoiding tax, like it's some kind of disease. If you don't get a pay rise that matches the rate of inflation, you're getting poorer year on year. And that's been happening to many public sector workers for the last 12 years. So I want a pay rise for everyone in this country and in this economy. And what's happening is that the rich are getting richer, profits are being uh, maintained and even accelerating while workers are getting poorer, and that cannot continue. We need a rebalance of wealth in this society. But the government says that doing that, to raise wages by the extent to which you want, or that you're suggesting, would be inflationary. It would drive up the cost of living and therefore effectively negate the pay increase. What do you say to that? Well, it's patently not true, is it? There's this myth put around by the powers that be, by the media, uh, their friends in the Daily Mail, the Bank of England, the Times, the LBC, perhaps Institute for Fiscal they, Studies. Yes, there's quite they, a lot of there's quite a lot of experts around. saying this. The majority of people in this country have not had a pay rise mm. for three years against inflation, mm. real terms pay rise, real wages, mm. as it's often called in economics. And for many millions of people uh, in the in the public sector, and that ranges from the armed forces through the police, ambulance workers, healthcare workers, teachers, and all sorts of people have not had a pay rise since the Cameron. Osborne sure. government. So it cannot be the case that the low paid in this country, the people below 40,000, let's say, just as a, a, as a mark, are responsible for rising prices. Rising prices are created by profit. So the big, the big shots in this economy, the Rishi Sunaks, billionaires, uh, and others that live on dividend and shareholdings, are raking in money. We have more billionaires than we've ever had mm. in this society. The super rich have never been richer. So what's responsible for price rises is the accumulation of profit in our economy. And it cannot be that a hospital porter is responsible for pushing up the price of petrol and the price of gas and the price but of... But there are respected economists saying that that exactly is the case, that if you give millions of people money, they spend more money, prices go up. That, other, that's what they're saying. There are other economists from another school, the Keynesian school, that say that is completely and utterly wrong. It depends who you read and what you believe. So you re reject and if you that believe, If you believe in Tory politics, you'll believe that workers are responsible for a price-wage spiral. It's not the case. Wages are chasing prices. Prices are not chasing wages. Because virtually everybody mm. below the top strata is poorer now than they were 10 years ago. So it cannot be that the low paid are creating price increases. Do you see this as effectively them trying to... So it seems, strikes me as what you're saying is the government is trying to scapegoat the low paid workers for the price rises that everyone is experiencing. Well, as a part of that, the government is trying, on behalf of their friends in the city and the people that own the means of production in a society, to keep wages low. If you keep wages low, you extend uh, and put more value into profit. And that's exactly what's happening. So if you work in the private sector, 
in a fulfillment center for Ocado, for DHL, for Amazon or one of those people, you're really struggling and you need a pay rise. And the, the cost of living uh, problem will be addressed through the pay packet, not through doles from the government every mm. now and again, which are, of course, temporary. Pay rises tend to be permanent. And that's what we need in this society. We need lower pay transformed into reasonable pay.